Hi guys, welcome to the shack. Excuse my voice, I've got uh, a very, very severe case of man flu, so uh, the gentleman amongst us will know what that's all about. Um, so, having uh, successfully installed the NRSP ST, um, I've now got it connected to, actually, well, I had it connected to two computers simultaneously a couple of nights ago. Um, I haven't used it since then because I've been feeling really rough, but um, I thought what I would do is I just share a few co comments on the connectivity uh, and particularly SDR Connect. So uh, that software that I've never used before, I've always used SDR Uno and love that software, but uh, SDR Connect is, is, uh, is really excellent. Um, having not used it at all, uh, I think the inst I think I may have said in my previous well I've said in a video that you that you would have seen by now that it only took me about five minutes to uh, install the software uh, and uh, get everything set up and connected but it took me about 15 minutes to find my way around SDR connect which says a lot really um, it really is sort of very intuitive now one important aspect to mention is that although I kind of broke the rules and whilst the NRS PST was connected into the back of my router via ethernet cable, the computer I used to uh, download the installer and install the, the software, so SDR Connect, the uh, updater, etc. Um, I did that wirelessly, which you're not supposed to do, um, but I got away with it. So there's a disclaimer in the text, in the description of this video stating exactly what you should do. Now, in the future, SDR Play, um, I, we'll, we'll resolve that. I spoke to John about that and um, that will definitely be resolved. But for now, make sure you go to the uh, NSDR, uh, the, sorry, the NRSPST sort of jump off page um, and then full comprehensive instructions are there for you to make sure that you uh, follow the correct process. But you will know if you've got the uh, up-to-date software and the most up-to-date version of the firmware when you open SDR Connect and you get these options. So you get the IQ Lite, the compact version, and the full IQ, an IQ file. Um, if you don't have the latest version of the software, you won't get all these options. So uh, that's worth uh, mentioning. So um, let's just connect. Now I'm tuned to Chain 3 Algeria uh, on I was on 252 kilohertz and I need to turn the volume down because they will be playing pop music which YouTube's algorithms will sense and then bar me from monetizing this video um, so there you go that's uh, what's the time so the time is 14 40 in the afternoon and there's a stonking signal uh s9 plus 20 almost um from algeria not bad for a daylight long wave signal um so yeah so i'm not going to run through everything uh in this software i'm just going to make the comment that as somebody who has used most sdr software packages um, I think this was probably the easiest to learn. I mean, and it's, I mean, uh, I think it was, e I mean, the ELAD, um, FDM, uh, SW2 software is amazing. Um, but I think this was, this is a straightforward, maybe even more so. Obviously this is, um, I think ELAD could do with probably updating that software, the FDM, SW2. Uh, I, I'm running version 3.57 and I think probably they could do with uh, updating it, but, um, still a great piece of software, but I think the, uh, the software, uh, the SDR Connect software is equally as good. So there's little buttons here that, that allow you to sort of toggle down all the various demodulation options, uh, automatic gain control, squelch, audio options. I mean, there's just so many options here. Uh, you can just, uh, press a button to go to whatever handband you want. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff on here. Um, fill spectrum, blah, 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 um, which I won't go through because they're all pretty straightforward. And probably if I look hard enough, someone's already made these comments. Uh, you can toggle between the spectrum scope and the waterfall. Um, and then you can, uh, yeah, 
there's almost unlimited ways of, uh, of adjusting how you're uh, receiving and observing the signal. So you can adjust the uh, FFT window size, the rate, reference level, the base, uh, etc. etc. So um, network information. So so yeah, so it's all um, it's all very good. Um, and I've had well, I've noticed that with the RF gain, if you turn it up too high, uh, obviously, there you go, you've got immediate overload on a strong signal like this. So I've got it sort of turned down a little bit. But um, yeah, it's a very nice piece of software. It's very intuitive. And um, I think, although it felt like forever, when I first got to grips with it, after having run through the software installation, in reality, that's like next to nothing, is it? Um, it just it just demonstrates, you know, what a what a easy piece of software it is to understand. So it's you know, been uh, well designed. It's uh, yeah, thoughtful layout and um, yeah, all the sort of controls that need to be next to each other are. It's yeah, it's uh, I like the styling of it. It's uh, yeah, ergonomically sound as far as I'm concerned. Um, and uh, yeah, I've enjoyed using it so far. So. Um, in terms of testing the actual device itself, I would last night I was enjoying uh, listening to some transatlantic medium wave DX, um, Voice of the Common Man, VOCM, on 590 kilohertz. Uh, Newfoundland Labrador was coming in quite loud on the uh, NRSPST, um, as was Bloomberg Radio, New, New York, on 1130 kilohertz. Um, I didn't bother doing any recordings because they, the signals, although they, they were good, weren't the best. But I guess the question is, um, you know, what have I heard on, say, some more expensive SDR receivers um, that I haven't heard on the uh, NRSPST? Well, so far, nothing. So what I've actually got set up here is uh, so the NRSP uh, ST uh, there. And then next to it is the Icon ICR 8600 um, being driven by SDR console version 3.3 um let's just turn the mute on so yeah can't be too careful when uh, you're listening to uh 252 kilohertz on long wave because uh, a lot of the time they play pop music um so I can make a direct comparison in terms of you know signal dimension signal strength etc signal to noise um between the uh NRSPST and the uh, much more expensive um, ICOM ICR8600. And when I say much more expensive, obviously I have to qualify that. Um, obviously the ICOM is, uh, is, a, is, a, is an actual radio with a traditional front panel. I think it goes to three gigahertz, not two gigahertz. And you know, the, uh, the SDR Play product is a, a box of electronics, but uh, nevertheless, it's interesting, isn't it? If you bought the ICOM, or if you obtained the ICOM just mostly for its capabilities on uh, on long wave, medium wave, and the HF bands, it would st still make an interesting comparison uh, in terms of can you hear more on the ICOM, which is what is it going to be four or five times more expensive than the SDR Play? Um, I think I saw the SDR Play quoted at five hundred US dollars. Um, and obviously the Icon brand new is £2,600, so it's a lot more expensive. Um, but it's still an interesting comparison nevertheless. So um, I've got those two receivers operating. Um, and I've also got the ELAD FDM Duo R, um, my new receive-only version um, on the same signal. So, um, so... Yeah, so the NRSPST is in uh, very strong, exalted company. Um, the uh, S the um, FDM Duo, or Duo R as I now own, um, is a is well proven. Excuse me, while I take a slurp of tea. Is well proven as easily one of the most sensitive receivers um, I've ever had in the shack. Um, which is why when I part exchanged my FDM Duo QRP version plus some other stuff for the ICOM and it took me about a week to realise I couldn't live without it so I got the Duo R um, much to the hilarity of the uh, kind chap that I did the deal with in the first place so um, so yeah 
easily one of the most sensitive receivers in the shack. Um, I've been through this already, but the ELAD and the ICOM on HF in terms of sensitivity. Now I've kind of like learned how to best use the ICOM by um, you've got to toggle the RF gain and the, and the preamp to get the absolute best performance out of it. I mean, they're, they're, the sensitivity of those two receivers is so close as makes no difference in the sort of real world. So you've got two excellent reference points um, to compare the NRSP to. So uh, it'll be interesting and I'm gonna do that. Now I can't decide whether I'm gonna do it in a sort of slightly ad hoc way. Um, a, the best way of doing it would be to record, do three simultaneous kind of screen recordings um, and sort of be really scientific about it, but that would actually be quite a lot of work. Um, and it might just be easier to um, just record a few videos, um, uh, particularly on sort of long wave um, and medium wave if I can switch between the receivers fast enough to um, just compare the audio and the sort of level of de you know, demodulation and um, um, background noise etc so um, I haven't sort of figured out exactly how I'm going to do that yet but I'm probably going to do it that's probably going to be the way I'm going to do it. Um, all of the uh, signals are coming into these receivers from uh, the same antenna so I've got two Wellbrook loops in the garden that are perpendicular to each other and I've got them coming into um, Benito NTI antenna jet RF splitter um, and then coming out of there into um, well actually they come in they come into the house via a switch obviously so I can switch between them and then the output of the switch goes into the back of the uh, RF splitter and then they split off into three separate uh, cab uh, uh, cables so so basically all three rigs are all connected to the same antenna at the same time so we can sort of get some real time uh, comparisons in terms of you know signal strength clarity audio uh, you know etc etc um and it'll be interesting um you know the nrspst uh if it's anything like its predecessors so if it's if it's basically similar to the uh, RSP Duo, or it's similar to RSP DX. Then I've do, I've I've done com I've done direct comparisons with those receivers with the ELAD, which or with my original ELAD, which was oh, about eight times more expensive. And I think I even compared it. I did a review for the Win Radio Excelsior latest version of their SDR. I can't remember the uh, the product number now, but. Um, it was like eight thousand five hundred pounds worth of SDR radio, and I compared it. The uh, it was probably the RSPDX to that radio, uh, along with the ELAD. And you know, you still have to conclude that the uh, the SDR Play product gave you kind of ninety five ninety seven percent of the performance of the Win radio for what you know, well. 100 quid, well, 8,000, 8, so a hundredth of 8,000 is 80 quid. So, you know, a tiny fraction of the cost. So in terms of performance as a function of price, in my honest opinion, I don't think anyone has done more to deliver uh, high quality SDRs to the market than uh, SDR Play. You know, I know that these RTL SDR dongles were around um, beforehand, but let's be honest, they were sort of originally designed for like, I think TV um, and, you know, you needed an up converter to use them, etc. You know, until, you know, I bought my ELAD eight years ago and it was like 800 quid. And then, you know, a couple of years later, SDR Play bring out the RSP1 or, you know, and it's like 90 quid and it's nearly as good. So, you know, the fact now that they've got this device and it's, you know, networked so you can connect more than one computer to it, you know, to me it's like good value for money. Um, it's obviously more expensive, but, you know, you get what you pay for. I've never touched word. I've never had an SDR Play product um, break down on me, have, uh, you know, go into any sort of fault mode or they've always worked. So, uh, so there you go. So in conclusion, SDR Connect, really straightforward, easy to use software. Um, took me about 15 minutes to get to get it in, to get it to get get my head around it well enough that I could uh, start listening to uh, some signals and observing some signals. Um, and yeah, I'm interested to compare 
that product with the uh, ICR8600, being driven here, as I said, by the SDR console, version 3.3, and the ELAD FDM Duo R being driven via the FDM SW2 version 3.57 software. So uh, there you go. So that's about it for now. Uh, I think I've rambled on for 15 minutes and 17 seconds. I need to stop talking and look after my cold. Um, Thanks, everybody. I uh, hope that was enjoyable. Um, catch you on the next one, 7-3.